Hello to my friends and colleagues in Hopping Los Angeles, my hometown, gathered for your most important annual computer conference, SIGGRAPH 2015. And thanks to VR champion Jackie Morey for inviting me to join you. On a family vacation, I'm speaking to you from Encinitas, California, a cozy little surf town that time forgot. Nearly 30 years ago, in 1988, I experienced my first digitally induced virtual world. As the California legislature's policy professional responsible for the state's growing high-tech sector, I made the rounds of the three Silicon Valley organizations then developing virtual reality systems, NASA, Jaron Lanier's VPL, and Mark Bolas Fake Space Laboratory. It was at Fake Space that I had my aha moment, donning a headset remarkably like today's Oculus device and a power glove. Suddenly, I was standing on an endless elevator, a simple animation, produced by vector-generated stairs that apparently moved upward, upward, one by one, and me along with them. This simple virtual world's experience was incredibly more compelling than a movie, TV, or even a Disneyland ride. It changed my life. I became a VR scientist, entrepreneur, and advocate. In the early 90s, abetted by William Gibson's Neuromancer novels, Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash, and Star Trek's Holodeck, Technologists, media scholars, and the press champion VR as a new way of broadening human understanding. The creation of powerful experiences with holistic, visual, auditory, tactile, haptic, and temporal dimensions came to be called experience design. It was one of a dozen hot topics dealing with VR in our global 6,000-member-plus Usenet news group, SciDot Virtual Worlds. Then along came the web sucking up investment and talent, starving the infant VR industry, and sending us back into a 2D world, all text, pictures, and abstractions. Experience design was co-opted by UX, user experience design, essentially website design. For two decades, internet users remained prisoners of the catalog paradigm. VR, subsumed by conventional applications, nearly vanished as a discrete technology. Its human community thinned and almost disappeared. Ironically, it took a $2 billion investment in VR by that largest catalog of all, Facebook, a film by Spielberg, Minority Report, and the revelation of death-dealing drones to breathe new life into a withered VR industry, now once more a magnet for industry and public attention. But despite a plethora of press agentry, in which even prestigious universities and institutions now participate, the VR community has yet to produce a cogent statement why, given all the other needs of society, Virtual Worlds R&D merits special attention, other than as a speculative investment, mainly for entertainment purposes. Once again, dollars and careers are being invested in VR as if it was a self-evident value. Apparently, we have lost our institutional memory, risking yet another VR bubble. Today's VR technology looks and feels disappointingly like that of the 80s and 90s, cheaper to operate perhaps, but only marginally more functional. Its applications seem even fluffier. Perhaps this is because we don't know what VR is best used for. Admittedly, this is a superficial assessment. Technical advances have been made, notably in graphic processing, data capture, GIS GPS applications, and augmented reality. But generally, these are not what the clamor is about. Key issues remain unresolved. Most notably, on the human side of the virtual world equation, we know embarrassingly little about the formation of virtual worlds in the mind and in the body, why VR works at all, and how experience design can be used to create and calibrate digitally generated simulacra that match up perfectly with our mentalities and our physicalities. VR's persistent field of dreams rationale, build it and they will come, is no longer credible. But it's not necessary. Our world is beset by innumerable crises and challenges, some that threaten life itself. People's ability to effectively propose positive visions of the future and to collaboratively realize the best of those visions, sustainable, resilient habitats, productive, equitable economies, edifying lifestyles, and perhaps even a peaceful planet, depend on widespread awareness, knowledge, and experience shared across barriers of space, time, language, and culture, VR-endowed systems designed or repurposed to enhance popular engagement, and government and corporate responsibility and responsiveness can do this. They can become the powerful media that we require, unprecedented solutions to meet unprecedented challenges. 
And in the process of meeting these challenges, we can and will forge a mandate for our industry and our community's success. Let's make it so. Thanks a lot for listening and have a really great conference.